Now let's say if we have a problem that looks like this. 3x plus 6y is equal to 12. And also 5x minus 8y is equal to 2. How do we solve a linear system that looks like this? How do we get the, the answer, the values for x and y? And how do we do so using the substitution method? If you know what to do, feel free to pause the video and try it. Now, what we need to do, the first thing, is we need to isolate one of the variables. So basically, we need to solve for it. It can be x or it can be y, but we need to get one of them by itself. And so you can pick an equation. I'm going to pick the first one because 3, 6, and 12, those numbers are all multiples of 3. So that tells me that the best variable to solve for is x. It's always better to solve or pick the variable with the lowest coefficient. 3 is less than 6, and so it's easier to solve for x than y. If you try to solve for y, you're going to get a fraction, and it's best to avoid that. In the second equation, 5 and 8, they're not multiples of each other. So if possible, it's best to not worry about the second equation right now. So I'm going to use the first equation, and I'm going to focus on solving for x. So I'm just going to rewrite it here. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract both sides by 6y. In order to isolate x, I need to get it by itself on the left side. If we subtract both sides by 6y, we're going to have 3x is equal to 12 minus 6y. Now, you can't combine these because they're not like terms. So you can't subtract them, so we have to just write them like this. Now, the next thing that we need to do to get x by itself is to separate the 3 from the x. The 3 is multiplied by the x. So to separate them, we need to perform the opposite operation of multiplication, which is division. So we're going to divide every term by 3. So here the 3's will cancel. 3 divided by 3 is 1. You can write 1x or simply x. 12 divided by 3 is 4. And negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. So negative 6y divided by 3 is negative 2y. And so as you can see, we have an equation where x is by itself and we don't have any fractions, which is great. So that's why I wanted to start with this equation because if you divide 12 and 6 by 3, you get a whole number. If we started with this one, let's say if we solve for x, when we divide 8 by 5, that's a fraction. When we divide 2 by 5, it's also a fraction. Likewise, let's say if you wanted to solve for y, if you divide 5 by negative 8, fraction. So that's why I decided to stay away from that equation. Now sometimes, you have no choice but to deal with fractions. And we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But for now, let's continue. So let's get rid of this. Let me make some extra space. Now, what do you think we need to do at this point? So once we isolate a variable, in this case x, we need to replace x, well, not in the first equation, but in the second equation. So we need to replace this particular x variable with 4 minus 2y. We got this equation from the first equation. Now we need to plug this in to the second equation. If we plug it in back to the first equation, it's just going to be no point. So let's substitute x with 4 minus 2y. So now we have one equation with one variable. So now we can calculate the value of y. So let's begin by distributing the 5. 5 times 4 is 20. And 5 times negative 2y is negative 10y. And then we can bring down the negative 8y. Now, our next step is to combine like terms. So we have negative 10y minus 8y, which is negative 18y. 
Now what should we do at this point? What I recommend doing is subtracting both sides by 20. And so these will cancel. We could bring down the negative 18y. And 2 minus 20 is negative 18. Next, we need to divide both sides by negative 18. Negative 18 divided by negative 18 is 1. So y is equal to 1. So that's half the battle right there. And now let's work on the other half. Now that we have the value of y, we can now calculate the value of x. So you could use either of the two equations. You could use the first one or the second one. Let's use the second one. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace y with 1. So negative 8 times 1 is just negative 8. Now the last thing we need to do is calculate the value of x. So what we need to do is add 8 to both sides. 2 plus 8 is 10. And then if we divide both sides by 5, we can see that 10 divided by 5 is 2. So x is 2. Now that we have x and y, the values for those two variables, we have our final answer. So we can write our answer as an xy ordered pair. So we can say the answer is 2 comma 1. x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 1. And so that's how you can solve a linear system by substitution. Now here's another one for you. 7x minus 5y is equal to 1 and 8x plus 4y is equal to 40. Which equation should we begin with if we wish to solve it by substitution? Would you use the first equation or the second equation if you want to avoid fractions? Because technically you can start with any one. Now looking at the first equation, 7 and 5 and 1, they're not multiples of each other. So I'm not going to use the first equation. Looking at the second one, 8, 4, and 40, those numbers are multiples of each other. So I want to use the second one. Now the second thing I need to consider is, do I want to solve for the x variable or for the y variable? To avoid fractions, pick the variable with the lowest coefficient. In this case, y, because 4 is less than 8. So what we want to do is, in this problem, we want to isolate the y variable in the second equation, because by doing so, we can avoid the use of fractions, making our life a lot easier. So let's start with the second equation, and let's isolate y. Let's begin by subtracting both sides by 8x. And so we could bring the 4y down. So what we have is 4y is equal to 40 minus 8x. Now, the last thing we need to do here is divide everything by 4. And so we're going to have y is equal to 40 divided by 4 is 10. And negative 8x divided by 4 is negative 2x. So we have y is equal to 10 minus 2x. So because we got that expression from the second equation, we need to plug that expression in to the first equation. So what we're going to do is replace y with 10 minus 2x. And so we're going to have 7x minus 5 times 10 minus 2x is equal to 1. So now, because we have one equation and one variable, we can now calculate the value of that variable. So let's begin by distributing the negative 5. Negative 5 times 10 is negative 50. And negative 5 times negative 2x is positive 10x. So let's combine like terms. We have 7x plus 10x, which is 17x. And then we can add 50 to both sides. So 1 plus 50 is 51. So we have 17x is equal 
to 51. Now we can divide both sides by 17. And so 51 divided by 17 is 3. So we have the answer for the first variable. x is equal to 3. Now, what we could do at this point is we can plug this in to the first equation or the second equation to get the y variable. But also, one thing that I forgot to mention in the first example is we can also plug it in here and get y as well. And that will be easier. So let's do that. Let's replace x with 3. So y is equal to 10 minus 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 10 minus 6 is 4. So y is 4. So our answer as an ordered pair is 3 comma 4. X comma Y. This is it. Now let's move on to our third example. So this one is going to be a little bit harder than the other ones. So go ahead and try this problem. Now, if we wish to avoid the use of fractions, which equation should we use? The first one or the second one? And which variable should we isolate, x or y? Now, looking at the first equation, 2, 7, and 34, they're not all multiples of each other. I mean, 2 goes into 34, but not 7. And 5, 4, and 1, they're not multiples of each other either. So it really doesn't matter which one you solve for because both equations will give you some sort of fraction that you have to deal with. However, the first equation is better than the second one because if you use the second equation, you're going to get two fractions. If you divide by 5, this is going to be 4 over 5 and this is going to be 1 over 5 with the negative sign, of course. However, if we use the first equation, and if we isolate x, dividing 7 by 2 will give us a fraction, but dividing 34 by 2 will give us a whole number. So we only have to deal with one fraction in that case. So let's go ahead and isolate x in the first equation. So let's begin by subtracting both sides by 7y. So this is going to be 2x is equal to 34 minus 7y. Now, let's divide both sides by 2. And so we're going to have x is equal to 34 divided by 2, which is 17, and then minus 7 over 2y. Now, because we got this expression from the first equation, we need to plug it in into the second equation. So let's do that. So it's going to be 5. Let's replace x with 17 minus 7 over 2y. And then we'll have minus 4y, which is equal to negative 1. Now let's multiply 5 by 17. 5 times 10 is 50. 5 times 7 is 35. And 50 plus 35 is 85. Now, what is 5 times negative 7 over 2y? All you need to do is multiply 5 by 7. 5 times 7 is 35. The 2 is not going to change, and the y is not going to change. So that's 5 times negative 7 over 2y is just negative 35 over 2y. And then we have negative 4y and negative 1. Now, for those of you who don't like fractions, if you want to get rid of them at this step, here's what you need to do. Identify the denominator, which is 2. And so you want to multiply every term on both sides of the equation by this number. So we have 2 times 85, which is 170. And then 2 times this fraction. The 2s will cancel. And so you're going to be left with negative 35y. And then 2 times negative 4y is negative 8y. And 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Now let's combine like terms. 
So we have negative 35y minus 8y, which is negative 43y. Next, we can subtract both sides by 170. And so this is going to be negative 43y, which is equal to negative 2 minus 170. And so that's negative 172. And then we need to divide both sides by negative 43. And so this will give us the answer. y is equal to 4. So now that we have the value of y, we can now calculate the value of x by plugging in to this expression. And so we're going to have 17 minus 7 over 2 times 4. 7 times 4 is 28. 28 divided by 2 is 14. Or you could do it this way. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 times 7 is 14. Your answer won't change. 17 minus 14 is 3. So x is 3. Thus, our final answer as an ordered pair is once again 3 comma 4. And so that's it. So now you know how to solve a linear system of equations by substitution. So that's basically it for this video. If you like it, feel free to give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Now, for those of you who may want more examples, feel free to check the links in the description section below, or check out my channel uh, for my new algebra video playlist, or if you're taking pre-calculus, I do have a playlist on that. So thanks again for watching.